Hey, I'm Janosch from Janosch Workspace and this is a six part series on Loom, the popular video collaboration software. You'll find the link to the entire series in the description down below. And now let's jump right into the video. In this video, we'll take a look at all of the sharing options that you have for sharing Looms with your friends, colleagues and clients um, through all the different channels. Let's get started right away. As we saw in previous videos, the easiest way to share a Loom is to share it through the link directly. So you just copy the link and then send that link to uh, anybody basically through email, through WhatsApp or through any other platform that you wish to use. But there are also a lot of other options that we have and we can see them by going to the share menu over here at the top and first of all if you go to social uh, we can directly share the video uh, to any of these social media platforms so we can share it to LinkedIn to Twitter to Facebook to Gmail um, just with the click of a button and we don't have to copy the link and go over there it will just do that for us manually you can also just share the video with a couple of people by mail so just entering their names and email addresses over here and then Loom will actually send this video to their email address or they'll send the link to their email address um, so that only these people can actually watch the video. Now what's important here is that Loom has different privacy settings and these are really important to determine who can actually see the video in the end. Because if you don't have any privacy settings turned on, then just anybody that has the link can actually view the video. So let's actually take a look at these privacy settings. And you see over here that right now anyone with the link can actually view the video. So that means if I have the link, I can see the video. But maybe you only want people inside of your workspace, so that people that are part of your company um, to be able to see this video. Um, so in this case, I could say only members in Yanar's workspace can view. Uh, and so Loom would check if the person that is accessing the video actually is signed into an account that's associated with this uh, workspace with this company. And only if, if they do, uh, then they have access to that video. The last option is to only uh, give access to people that have been added to this video. So only people that you have shared uh, this video uh, with using their name over here in the, this field or the email address. So anybody else wouldn't be able to access the video. Um, and this is if you have something that's really confidential or that you don't want anybody to see, even not inside of your company. But it doesn't stop there. We also have some more options. And this is basically where you get all the uh, different privacy settings that we can we can set. So for example, this is also where we see if we have added anyone to the video and we see that we have not added anyone to this video yet. Um, so we could add some people over here, but let, let's take a look at the actual video settings here. So the first one, we've seen that before. So basically we're saying uh, anyone with the link can view or they have no access. Then members of the workspace, so members of your company, can, do they have the, the uh, permissions to view the video? or do they also have the permissions to edit the video, for example, or maybe they should have no access. Um, you can specify that in here. Then also search engine indexing. That's really awesome if you want to you know, create content and you might want the video to actually rank in the search engines, if that's you know something that might be helpful to you. Um, in many cases, you would probably disable that, but if you you know use these videos uh, in Loom for marketing purposes, then that's maybe something that you want to turn on and to enable over here. Uh, then we can also set a password for this video. So this is again for really confidential information. Um, in this case, anybody that, that would be uh, getting the, the video link, um, they would have to enter in that password in order to even see the video. Um, so you can, you can you know, turn that on if you want to. Um, you can enter a password in here, save that password. Uh, and then people will be actually asked that password to view the video. And then lastly, as we've seen before, we have the option to post the video to our company um, you know, library. Um, and in this case, we've turned that on, but we could also say we don't want to post this to our company library if uh, for whatever reason, um, that's something we don't want to do. Now, I told you before that it's really easy to add Looms to your website as well. And I'm going to show you how that works uh, now. You can basically do that by going to the embed tab and here you have the things that you need for, for this. So um, over here, you have the this button that says copy embed code, and you have these uh, toggles over here to say if you want to have a responsive size or a fixed size. If you click on fixed size, um, you, it will basically embed the size into the code, and therefore it will always be displayed in this size on your website um, if there's enough space for it. But I usually just use the responsive size and then click on copy embed code, 
And now I'm going to go to my website. Uh, in my case, this is a WordPress website. So um, if you have a different type of website, it might be a bit differently, um, but in the end, it's still pretty similar uh, because what we have to do is we have to add custom HTML to one of our pages. So yeah, let, just, let me just quickly show you how this works. So I'd go to pages in here and I have this Loom demo setup. So I just go to uh, edit over here. And in here, I'll just paste the code that we got from Loom. So just paste that in here and click on update. And once it's updated, let's view the live page. So let's go to the page. And I've also embedded one video here before, but now you see this video is now embedded here as well, um, just like we want it to be. Now, since we're talking about sharing our Loom videos, I quickly want to touch on the Loom video analytics as well, because they can really help you to understand how people have actually interacted with your videos, um, especially if you're using Loom in a marketing or sales context. So for example, if you have a sales video that is uh, credited through Loom, and you want to kind of track um, how many people have watched the video and also how many people maybe clicked on the call to action of that video. Um, and you could do that using the Loom video analytics. So I've got a video here that I've just, you know, randomly clicked on a couple of times in order to get some views and to show you how this works. Um, so this is a video that has a call to action. And uh, for all of these videos, um, we can see up here, there is this button that has the, the amount of views and also the engagement insights. And this is what we want to go to. Um, and if I click on that and click on see engagement, we'll actually see an overview of the actual like uh, engagement statistics for this video. So the three metrics that Loom gives us are the total video views, the average completion rate, and also the call to action conversion. And um, the first one is pretty self-explanatory. So that just shows you how many people have actually watched the video. Um, then the second one is of those people, how much of the video did they actually watch on average? So in this case, about half of the video and also how many of those people that actually uh, watched the video clicked on the call to action at some point during the video as well. And again, this is really helpful. It, it's not that like, um, you know, there's not that much elaborate data here, but still, even these little small little metrics are really interesting to see, especially if you have a video that has, you know, lots of lots more views than this. Um, maybe you have uh, videos embedded into your blog content and uh, they link to your newsletter or to one of your products or they promote an affiliate product. Um, and in these cases, it's really interesting to see um, how they actually convert people to customers or to subscribers or things like this. All right, that's it for this video and also for this entire video series on Loom. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then please let me know by leaving a comment down below and liking this video. If you like my content, then you can obviously also subscribe to the channel uh, and then I'll see you in the next video or the next video series. See you there.